Scientists have just discovered something incredible under the massive ice of Greenland, frozen for thousands of years. We have now found it, and we will probably have to rewrite the history of our planet. Stay tuned to see the exciting original footage. Welcome, friends. Imagine you're traveling back in time a million years into the past, landing in Greenland and expecting an icy snow desert. Instead, you find yourself in a green tundra surrounded by flowers, insects, and even small trees. Sounds incredible? Well, then this new discovery will blow your mind. By the way, if you always want to be informed immediately about such fascinating insights, groundbreaking research, and incredible secrets of nature, then leave a subscription right now and activate the bell for all these exciting topics. It's absolutely free, you'll never miss a video again, and you'll be helping me immensely. Thank you guys. So now let's head up north, more precisely to the heart of Greenland. Here, under a three kilometer thick layer of ice, researchers have discovered something that could fundamentally change our image of the past and possibly also the future of the planet, but let's start at the beginning. In 1993, scientists drilled a hole right through the Greenland Ice Shield. This project, known as the Greenland Ice Shield Project 2, or GISP 2 for short, was designed to shed light on the Earth's climate history. The researchers took an ice core, which is like a frozen history book. Each layer tells a story about the climate of past times, as if you were to drill into your thigh and take a flesh core that would contain all the information about your life so far. What am I talking about here? At the bottom of the borehole, at a depth of over 3,000 meters, the scientists found something unexpected, rock and sediment. At the time, they didn't think much of it. They took the samples with them, packed them, and put them in storage. There they rested for almost 30 years, until now. And yes, 1993 is actually more than 30 years ago. I was born in 1991, and if this year is 33, write me in the comments how old you are. Maybe I feel a bit more like a whippersnapper again, depending on the age of the people here. But anyway, a team of researchers led by Paul Biermann, what a fantastic name, from the University of Vermont, decided to take a closer look at these long forgotten samples and what they found was something else. In the sediments, they discovered the remains of plants and insects, not completely fossilized, but amazingly well preserved. There were fragments of willow wood, spores of mosses, parts of insect legs and eyes, and the icing on the cake, a perfectly preserved poppy seed. Now you might be thinking, So what? A few plant remains? Boring. But think about it. These remains were found under three kilometers of ice in the heart of Greenland, where temperatures are well below freezing all year round. This means that it was once warm enough for plants to grow and insects to fly around, and not in the distant past, when dinosaurs still roamed the Earth, but geologically speaking, only recently, probably within the last million years. Imagine that, relatively recently, Greenland, which is now 80% covered by ice, was a green tundra. Where there is now eternal ice, flowers and grasses grew, insects buzzed, and perhaps even streams splashed. It was a completely different world. Back then, Greenland really lived up to its name, although it was only later that the Vikings developed it as a kind of marketing measure to attract more settlers to this cold coast. Even in the Middle Ages, people were already being taken for a ride. But it gets even better. The researchers not only found plant remains, but were even able to determine which species they were. For example, there was the rock moss fern, a plant that today only occurs in southern Greenland. And then there was this one poppy seed, but not from just any poppy, but from a species that today only grows in completely different regions of the Arctic. These plants tell us a fascinating story about the climate of that time. They suggest that it was much warmer in central Greenland than it is today, but still relatively cool by comparison. The researchers estimate that the average temperature in July was between 1 and 10 degrees Celsius. By way of comparison, today it is around 15 degrees Celsius. Now you might be asking yourself, Wait a minute, how do they know that maybe these plant remains were blown there? Good point, but the researchers thought of that. The remains found were so well preserved that they could not have been transported very far. They must have grown where they were found, and it gets even crazier. The scientists even found wood. That's right, wood. In the center of Greenland, under three kilometers of ice. These are small pieces of willow wood, probably from young plants. This means that central Greenland was not only home to grasses and flowers, but possibly even small trees or shrubs. 
And speaking of crazy, do you know what else the researchers found? Mushrooms. To be more precise, the remains of a soil fungus called Senocarcum geophyllum. This fungus is widespread today and lives in symbiosis with many plants. Its presence indicates that Greenland once had a fully developed ecosystem with all the trimmings. Okay, that all sounds super exciting, but what does it mean? It has a huge impact on our understanding of climate change and the future of our planet. Until now, Many scientists thought that the Greenland ice sheet had remained more or less stable for millions of years. However, this new discovery shows that it is much more fragile than we thought. If Greenland has been almost ice-free in the past, it could happen again, and sooner than we think. So guys, go and ask your trusted estate agent about properties in Greenland. But seriously, the Greenland ice sheet contains huge amounts of water. Around 10% of the world's fresh water is stored in the Greenland ice. If this layer of ice were to melt completely, it would cause quite a stir in the oceans and sea levels, but before you start panicking and buying swimming armbands, it is important to understand that this process, even if it were to begin now, would take centuries or millennia. We are talking about geological time periods here, not something that would happen overnight. This is what Greenland would look like without ice, so I'm already reserving a nice holiday cottage on this central lake. Let me know if you would like to join me there for a beer on the porch. I find this discovery so exciting because it shows how quickly everything on our planet can change drastically. What we take for granted, for example, that Greenland is free of ice, is only the case at the moment, a brief blink of an eye in the history of the Earth. And the crazy thing is that we only know all this because a few scientists decided to take another look at a 30-year-old rock sample. Imagine what else we could discover if we were to take a closer look at all the samples that are sitting somewhere in a dusty laboratory. There's another aspect of this story that I find really fascinating, because do you know what the discovery of these plant remains under the ice means? It means that we have found a kind of time cap a perfectly preserved snapshot of a long-lost world. Think about it. These plants and insects were covered by ice and preserved for hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of years. It's like we've opened the door to a lost world and who knows what else we might find in the depths of the Greenland ice. Maybe there are still surprises in store. Larger animals or traces of early humans or perfectly preserved dinosaur DNA that could be used to clone dinosaurs and build a megalomaniacal theme park that doesn't meet any safety standards. <laughs> Okay, that might be an exaggeration, but in any case, this discovery shows us that we still have a lot to learn about the history of our own planet. And sometimes the biggest surprises are literally buried right under our feet, or in this case, under a thick layer of ice. If you don't want to miss out on any more exciting scientific discoveries in the future, don't forget to subscribe to the channel now and activate the bell. And now let's stay with amazing climate stories. I recently had the opportunity to conduct an exciting interview with a professor of meteorology about the climate phenomenon La Nina and El Nino, which also included what effects La Nina will have on the weather worldwide. If you want to know everything about it and what other weather changes are in store for us, click on the link in the top right hand corner. And if you want to support the channel, feel free to watch the older videos too, as there are many exciting topics there. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.